Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie and I am a biochemistry major at Sacramento State University. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about three main reasons why women don't go into STEM fields. The first reason is environmental factors such as stereotypes, support you receive from your parents and from teachers, and also the community you grow up in. The second reason is lack of role models, and the third reason is struggling with confidence. So let's get to it. Before we start, I just want to say everything that I'm using in this video, I have research articles on and all of that will be posted in the description below. So feel free to check them out. I highly recommend it as always. They're super beneficial to read. Um, so yeah. Reason number one, environmental factors. The first section of this is going to be stereotypes. People used to think, and maybe some people still do think, that men are smarter than women. But there have been multiple studies showing that the average IQ of men and women is essentially the same. So there is no reason why women can't be just as successful as men in these fields. Another stereotype is that people think that STEM is a masculine field and that arts and humanities is a feminine field. And because of this, young girls and young women don't want to go into masculine fields that they feel they wouldn't belong in. So this is one thing that inhibits them from going into these fields. And of course, that could also go the other way with men not wanting to go into arts and humanities fields because they're feminine fields. And also there's a stereotype that STEM people or people who major in STEM fields are geeky or nerdy. And those terms that are used make young women and young girls not want to associate with them because they don't want to be classified as geeky or nerdy that you see in those stereotypical movies of people who are usually portrayed as the scientist. And that is of course not true. You can look like a normal person, or maybe I don't look normal, but you can be whatever you think is normal. It doesn't matter. There is a whole bunch of different type of people who associate with being in STEM fields, so there is no certain way you have to look or be to be in a STEM field. Section number two, support from parents and teachers. More specifically teachers, when teachers don't encourage young women and young girls to go into STEM fields, they're already inhibiting them from not wanting to go into these fields. And teachers also play a role in that those stereotypes where they only encourage the boys to go into STEM and they don't do that for the women or the young girls. Teachers, especially for grade school, have a lot of influence on young girls and young women. The way that young women and girls view themselves and what they can accomplish. And so if teachers aren't constantly telling girls and young women that they can succeed in STEM fields and they can do all of these things, then they will grow up thinking that they can't do that or that it's only for men because it's a masculine field. So a lot of the times teachers do do this and they pay more attention to boys and they praise boys for um, excelling in math and science courses compared to young girls. So teachers do do this a lot where they place these stereotypes on these young kids and once the support diminishes from their own teachers, this really discourages young girls to go into these fields or thinking that they will succeed in these fields because they don't hear it as a young child. Support from your parents is also very important. It's not as, it's studies have shown, it's not as significant as the impact that teachers have on young kids though. So it's very important for the teachers to make sure that you're educating these young girls and young women to where they can go into these fields. But of course, parents do have a role and they can encourage their children, especially girls and women, to go into the STEM field, letting them know that they can succeed and they will succeed if they try this and if this is what they want to do. Now this brings me to section number three, the community you grow up in. The community you grow up in really shapes you as a person, whether you grow up in a poor community or a wealthy community. Some disadvantages that poor communities have is not having enough money to actually buy science supplies for different laboratories for like high school classes. Whereas in a wealthy community, they have more money to spend on their students and to get them the tools necessary for them to succeed. When you come from a poor community, a lot of times they don't necessarily prepare you for college when you're in high school. They only prepare you to go into the workforce and expecting that you will only go into the workforce after high school. Like me personally, I grew up in a poor community and I saw that in my high school that they, my high school did not prepare me for college at all. 
I went into college not knowing how to study for any of my classes. And give and take, maybe it was because I wasn't a great student in high school. I mean, yeah, I barely paid attention and I only wanted to do sports and focus on that. But just because I was a dumb kid doesn't mean they should have given up on me and not prepared me for the possibility of me going to college. And that really showed when I did go to college, it really affected me. So here are some ways that we can combat these different situations. One thing that is extremely important is for teachers, especially during elementary school and middle school and throughout high school, they need to provide equality in their classrooms and make sure they are giving equal education to both men and women that they have in their classes. And they also need to encourage young girls and young women to go into these STEM fields since there are so many stereotypes against them. And now this is for parents. What you can do is also support your children. Allow your children to discover what they want to do and give them the support that they need. If they want to go into the STEM field, then be all for it. Don't discourage them from doing that. They can do it. And as for the community you grow up in, you can't really do anything about growing up in a poor community, but what you can do is defeat the odds that are against you and excel even when people tell you you can't. You can prove them wrong. Don't let the community you're in hinder you from achieving the greatness that you can achieve. Reason number two, lack of role models. This is a very important thing um, that the science community really needs to improve on is providing more role models for young girls and women to look up to. And I did talk about this in a previous video of mine, which I will link here here maybe somewhere here around here somewhere it'll be linked <laughs> that you can go check out. One thing that we can do is really highlight the accomplishment that current women in STEM have made so that young women can look up to these women and know that there is something that you can accomplish in even though this is a male dominated field. This will let them know that they can still make a difference and increase the numbers of women in STEM. There are so many ma amazing women in the past who haven't been acknowledged for the amazing work that they made um, and their contributions to the scientific community. Like one example is Rosalind Franklin. Have you heard of her? Because you should have, she played a significant role in discovering the double helix, which is DNA. So she is the one who actually took the picture of the DNA structure and Francis Crick and James Watson stole her picture from her and used it and published without her, without giving her hardly any recognition for the significant work that she did. And they ended up winning a Nobel Prize, even though Rosalind Franklin deserved that Nobel Prize. And there are so many other amazing women who got stripped from their accomplishments because other men stole their work and didn't give them credit for it. And I'll link an article to that down below so you should go check it out. Reason number three, struggling with confidence. Studies have shown that women are one and a half times more likely to leave STEM majors after taking a calculus course. And this is not due to their incapability of doing math, but their confidence in thinking they can't do math and thinking that everyone else is doing better than them. Some studies have even shown that women in the higher up grades actually outperform men in mathematics. Personally, when I was going through calculus, I had to take calculus three different times. Yes, three different times. The first time I took calculus, I failed, and I felt about it, and I thought that I couldn't succeed, and I was dumb, and I couldn't do this. That was the first time. The second time, I, I mustered up the courage to sign up for the class again, and I dropped it. Yep. I dropped the class, I was halfway through and I dropped it. I felt incapable and that I couldn't do it. And finally, on my third try, when going into the course, I told myself, okay, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to succeed in this class. Even if, it, if I barely pass with a C, I'm going to make sure I pass this class. And so that's what I did. I put in extremely hard work and I did all the homework. I always went to my professor's office hours and I ended the class with an A. So you can do it. If it's just confidence, you need to tell yourself that you can do it. And it might take you a lot longer than you were expecting it would take you, but you can do it. So if you have ever experienced anything like this in your classes, comment down below and let me know which classes that was in. And that's all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys next week. So until next time.